Today, on this Two Sit Tuesday, we're going to talk about Fridge 101. What you need to know. I figured on this Two Sit Tuesday, I would talk about the RV fridge because there's so many new people out there and everybody has tons of questions about the fridge. I wanted to kind of go over a few things that you must know about your RV fridge. The first thing is this clip. And I'm not gonna go into detail about this because I did a video on that. But this clip right here, when you are not using your fridge you don't, and you don't want it on, you don't wanna keep it closed up. You want to keep the airflow going. And this clip here, it helps you do that. That way you don't have to try to, to fix it where it won't close or it accidentally gets closed. This will keep that from happening. All right, so this comb, I have a lot of people asking what it is and it actually slides on the door and holds smaller items in place. But I never use this ever. I always use a foam noodle. I have a bunch of them cut in different sizes and I just wedge them in with the product on the door and then that keeps them small. I have like small ones that I put in front, like just different ways. That way on travel days and everything's not snug, you can make it snug in your, R in your fridge. Whenever you're getting ready to go on a trip and you want your refrigerator to be cold before you go, you need to turn it on. You want to turn on your fridge a minimum of 24 hours before you actually put food in here. And then you only want to put cold food in here because if you put warm food or room temperature food, it will hamper it getting cold. Because the way the RV fridge works, it pulls the heat out of the items you don't want to put warm items in your RV fridge. The, the actual fridge pulls the temperature out of the item. And if it's warm, it's going to make your RV fridge warmer, quicker. So you never want to put room temperature items or warm items in your RV fridge. That will like hurt you big time. So what I usually do about 48 hours before we decide to go on a trip, I turn ours on and let it start getting cold. And then after 24 hours, I move the items that I want to take from my, R my regular house fridge and put it in the RV fridge. That way everything is already cold and you don't have to worry about it messing up your temperature and ruining your food. Now I want to give you a really quick defrost tip for your freezer. What I do is you get these at the Dollar Tree. They're plastic cutting boards and you put them in the back of your fridge and then the next time it needs to be defrosted, all you have to do is take that out and the ice is actually attached to it and you don't have to defrost the whole thing. So that is a great tip to keeping the frost, the defrosting process to a minimum. Now, another thing about your RV fridge, I like using these plastic bins. There's a double thing for these plastic bins. One, you need space in your RV around the outside edge. You don't want to cram your food in there and it be up against the walls because the way the fridge works, it needs the airflow to keep it cool. I would say that these right here are probably the best way to keep that from happening. Just because when you throw stuff in here, it's gonna fall up against the sides. But if you use these plastic bins, it helps so much to keep everything out from up against the edge. I said these bins, they do multiple things. One, keeps the airflow going around. But two, these bins, because you don't wanna open your fridge and be like staring at it, you want it to be open and out. 
what a lot of times I will do is I will take this bin and everything that I need to make sandwiches, I will put in this bin. I'll put the cheese, I'll put the meat. That way when I open up this fridge, I know I can grab this one thing, open, close, get in, get out, and know that I have everything I need instead of standing here going, um, oh, there's the meat and oh, oh, there's the cheese and oh, oh. So like if you eat tomato, I mean like I tried to put it in like a bin or two, that way you can just grab your bins and maybe grab your mustard and ketchup and get out. That's just the best way to do it. So these bins here, they have several purposes. Now, this is kind of a controversial thing. So do what you feel is comfortable. I'm going to tell you what we do and I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to do and go from there. I always put ours on auto so that when we're traveling, it stays cold. Now, I don't put it on auto if we're going to have like a short day. I mean, on a short day and it won't be that long and the stuff I know will stay cold but you have to put it on the auto if you're going to have a six or seven, you know, if you're going to have more than a three or four hour travel day, it needs to be on auto. Now, certain state highway regulations say that you can't have your propane tanks on while traveling. You're not supposed to put them on, have them on when you go to a gas station, and you're not supposed to have them on when you go through a tunnel. Be what you want to do. <laughs> But those are the rules about propane being turned on while you're traveling. Well, all right. I hope you enjoyed this Two Cent Tuesday. I felt like this was something that everybody needed to know and everybody is asking questions about. With all the new RVers, people don't understand or know how things go. But I did research this. I mean, this was stuff we already did, but I researched it just to make sure that I was correct as well, and I saw the same thing across the board. I did see one other tip that we don't do, and I've never tried it, but some people said that if you put a frozen bottle, a frozen milk jug in your freeze, in your refrigerator, it helps cool it down quicker. Don't know if that's true, but that was a tip that I found. All right, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know every time I'm uploading a video. Also, hit that thumbs up button. That way, we know that you enjoyed our video and we can keep making more videos that you like. Till next time, like and subscribe.